Hello, my friends, and welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie K. Campbell, where the K stands for killing the digital ADHD co working game. What the f does that mean? If that's what you're wondering, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to answer one of the most common and hilarious questions that I get during my ADHD co working sessions. I can't believe this is working. Why the f is this working? Seriously, I get this question or like a theme on this question several times in each session. So several times a day. I figured it's about time I answer it with more than uh because. But to be honest, for a very long time, I didn't even know why <laughs> these ADHD co-working sessions were working. I just knew that my particular brand of ADHD is highly dependent on accountability when it comes to like actually getting anything done. But since these ADHD co-working sessions have blown up and proved to be super helpful for a bunch of other people, literally thousands, maybe not thousands, like hundreds. No, maybe thousands. Actually, for sure, for sure. Figured it's time to do some research behind this stuff. I like doing research. In this video, I'm going to share with you the reasons behind why these ADHD co-working sessions work, at least according to the research that I was able to find and the hypothesis, the hypotheses, the hypothesis that I created as a result of those researches. Jesus. Okay. Here's the rundown. Um, first, I'm going to talk briefly about the ADHD brain and which elements tend to be the most effective in creating motivation for the ADHD brain. Then I'm going to talk about the three main elements of my ADHD co-working sessions, namely body doubling, the Pomodoro technique, and the use of instrumental music. Obviously, throughout all of this, I'm going to try to connect these things um, <laughs> together to the best of my ability, kind of see if we can figure out why these co-working sessions are so effective. And I will have a link to send to people instead of trying to explain it every time. Cool. Let's get into it. First, if you're someone with ADHD or if you're someone who suspects you have ADHD, or even if you simply have somebody in your life who has ADHD, subscribe to my channel so that I can regularly share educational and hopefully entertaining content about what it's like to live with ADHD and how you can live more effectively is a weird word. Uh, fully with ADHD? Uh, yeah, sure better. You can also sign up for my highly inconsistent newsletter in the description of this video if you'd prefer to take our relationship a little more slowly. All right, now let's get into it. The ADHD brain and the different things that help it to become motivated, aka to get us to do stuff. We've all pretty much like unanimously agreed that like ADHD is improperly named, right? If we haven't yet, we, we should, we should. There is so much more to the ADHD brain than simply a deficit in attention. And to be honest, it's really not a deficit at all. If anything, it's a, what's the opposite of deficit? Abundance of attention? We don't lack attention. We lack the ability to put our attention on the appropriate things. I, I don't know what's with this pen. You know what though? I have something even better. Let's try it. Hi, baby. I love you so much. Don't kick me. Did I mention that it's Christmas Eve right now? It's Christmas Eve and I'm at home filming a YouTube video about my proposed business. It's Capricorn <gasps> season. Anyway, um, I wanted to put the pen down and instead use this magic wand that my mom got me for Christmas. I get a gift every year on her birthday, which was yesterday. And yesterday she gave me my wand. Am I holding it right? How do I hold it? I think it's like this. Anyway, I'm gonna use the wand as my pointer. Pointer, barely know her. Okay, this video is already weird. So yeah, it's less of an attention deficit and more of an attention everywhere. We don't lack attention. That would make us virtually brain dead. We just struggle to be attentive to the right things, to the right things. Lots of air quotes today, air quotes. 
Anyway, related to this issue with us being able to control our attention is also our ability to, or inability to control our motivation and the things that motivate us to act. And I will just say in terms of like the misnomer that is ADHD, the information that I tried to find on like motivation and ADHD and all that stuff, the amount of misinformation, the amount of just like archaic information is truly disheartening. Luckily, if you do enough digging, you might actually find somebody who knows what the f you're talking about. And in my case, I did. Dr. William Dodson. Wow, this is really fun. So Dr. Dodson wrote this incredibly valuable article for a Attitude Mag. I never know how to explain it. Attitude Magazine, and it's called Secrets of Your ADHD Brain. I will link it in the description of this video. If you would like to check it out, I highly suggest it. Dr. Dodson posits that ADH the ADHD nervous system regulates attention and emotion in ways that are totally different from non-ADHD people and nervous systems, right? And by the way, he also agrees with the fact that ADHD is a big misnomer. I digress. The key takeaway from Dodson's work is that ADHD isn't a deficit of anything, meaning motivation or attention. Instead, it's just a system, a nervous system, that operates more successfully under a set of rules that the world really wasn't built around. It's basically, it's basically like trying to make iOS work on a Samsung Galaxy phone, which bothers me because I don't want ADHD people to be the Samsungs of this analogy, but our nervous system just works under a different set of rules than the rules that neurotypicals nervous system work under. But perhaps even more importantly, Dodson explains that from his research, by the way, he has ADHD himself. We love a researcher with lived experience. He's found that people with ADHD have a brain slash nervous system that are motivated by the following things. One, interest. I like this. Two, challenging slash competitive environments. I want to win this. Three, novelty. I'm unfamiliar with this. Four, urgency. This needs to get done yesterday. Assuming the ADHD brain gets motivated by interest, challenge slash competitive environments, slash novelty, slash urgency or one or a few or all of those things in combination, which of those elements are triggered in my ADHD co-working sessions and how they are set up. Oh my God, this is working. Why is this working? Every ADHD co-working session that I host loosely follows the following format. One, it's organized or ran or hosted by a highly engaging, somewhat unpredictable host. Hi, that's me. And I might be tooting my own horn here, but like toot, toot, that sounds a lot like interest. Two, in every session, we use the Pomodoro technique or the Pomodoro method, which is basically a fancy way of saying intentional time blocking, meaning we work on whatever we need or want to work on for 25 minutes and then follow that little work session with a five minute break. And that goes on for the first three sessions, totaling out to an hour and a half, three Pomodoros. On the fourth Pomodoro, there's an extended break, 15 minutes, to kind of break up the long session altogether, because usually we do eight Pomodoros. Not only is time blocking effective, but the concept of only having to focus on whatever it is you need or want to focus on for 25 minutes is obviously much more manageable than uh, the idea of just sitting down in front of a computer and being like, I'm gonna work on this forever. Our brain does do that. We tend to exaggerate the amount of time that something will take or the amount of effort something will take or under exaggerate the amount of time that it's time blindness, okay? So not only is it easier to just focus for 25 minutes and is to focus for some undisclosed amount of like mystery time, you're also racing the clock. And whether or not that's like consciously taking place or subconsciously, it doesn't really matter. It creates, ta-da, a challenging, and competitive environment. On one hand, you're challenging and competing against the clock. On the other hand, you're challenging and competing against yourself because you want to finish these Pomodoros, you want to get them. And then a third part, there's camaraderie there, but there is almost like a sense of fact that there are a bunch of other people in there doing this with you. It puts that same feeling of external pressure on that comes with any competition or challenge or most competitions or challenges. Are you still here? If you're still here, I, I would like to suggest that you like this video, throw me a like. Is it creating interest? If it's not, why are you still here? Did I also mention that everyone else is doing it? So 
It's almost like I'm challenging you to like this video. I wonder if you'll be able to do it. We'll see. I cannot wait to see if that works. What's next? Novelty. How does novelty play into my ADHD co-working sessions? Well, every session is soundtracked, most often by highly stimulating, uplifting, upbeat music. Not to mention, two of the 4.5 hours, the music is chosen by the audience, by the coworkers, by the people who aren't me. So you literally never know what you're gonna get in the next 25 minutes. Talk about novelty, right? Classical coffee, lo-fi, jazz vibes for 25 minutes, and then the next 25 minutes you're listening to like guttural viking meow electro swing musical parkour plus there's plus there's an endless stream of commenters going on throughout this not to mention whatever random shit comes out of my mouth so yeah there's quite a bit of novelty to these sessions now finally for the urgency where does that come in well there's the timer the constant timers yeah that helps not to mention a lesbian in your face being like hey stop fraternizing kids do your work i'm gonna ask you for a progress update in 20 minutes i don't always do that but i i do it often i do it sometimes aside from all of those things working very well alongside the adhd brain and like what motivates it the co-working sessions it's themselves are built on the foundation of something called body doubling and i know that sounds like some weird like sci-fi alien type thing um but it's real it is an especially effective tool for people with adhd it doesn't involve clones it really is so simple, body doubling is just working in the presence of another human being. The other person doesn't even necessarily need to be working. However, my theory is that body doubling is especially helpful in the co-working sessions because it makes something magic happen with like our mirror neurons. So while it would be as effective to just have somebody in the house sitting around as we're doing whatever we need to do, it like ups the effectiveness even more when we are watching somebody do something productive or when we know that we need to do the same. We want to mirror that, you know? So if said body double is working on something, which if I'm your body double in these ADHD co-working sessions, you will most likely end up working too. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of research out there on body doubling and even less on body doubling and mirror neurons. But from a strictly anecdotal perspective, it fucking works y'all. And let's just like put this out there. I don't even know if I really need to say this, but to be fair, a lot of this, everything that I've just explained are educated guesses. Um, and when I started the co-working sessions like back in June of 2021. None of these things, none of these elements were intentionally built into the sessions because I knew that they would hit on each ADHD brain thing. I was just doing what was working for me live. It happened to start working for other people, hundreds of other people, thousands of other people, one million other people. Okay. So yeah, I might not have like a research team at my disposal yet, but I would say those are some pretty persuasive results. Which reminds me, um, if you or someone you know would like to become an official sponsor of one or more of these ADHD co-working sessions, brand partner type thing, hit me up, email me. Hello at AllieKCampbell.com. We can talk, we can talk, we can talk. Clean cause, you know the OGs. They sponsored November and December and, and got quite a nice little ROI from it. So looking for our next sponsors, trying to book up all of 2022 by January. What's the last thing? What's the last thing? Okay, so, oh yes, to quickly touch on the music aspect of it, the soundtracking aspect of it. The music is a huge element. It's a huge, huge element. And that actually does have some science behind it. You can Google the benefits of like listening to instrumental or classical music when trying to study your focus and you'll get a shit ton of results. Um, but I will also leave a link to the study that I read. Great article published by, by Florida National University that discusses how music, especially instrumental music, activates both the left and the right hemisphere of our brain at the same time, which tends to like maximize learning and even improves memory in the brain, which two very important things um, when, we're, when we're trying to do knowledge work or any kind of work really. Um, and two very important things for people with ADHD who struggle with those two things. Thanks, Florida. I, I don't have any other information as to why these co-working sessions work other than what I've researched and come up with on my own. Would it be that hard for everyone to just believe that I came up with a really good idea 
That shouldn't be so hard to believe. I'm speaking to a wand. Let's wrap it all up though. ADHD brains function differently from non-ADHD brains, specifically because they are motivated by things that other brains aren't motivated by, um, AKA interest challenge slash competitive environments, novelty and urgency. Co-working with other people who have ADHD, especially in an environment that happens to trigger each one of those little motivation points can be super effective. Add to that the accountability piece that comes with a community of like-minded others. Again, a fantastic host. The magic, the magic of mirror, neur Jesus Christ, mirror neurons and some like super dope beats. You've got the world's first digital co-working space built by and for ADHD minds, my friends. Uh-huh, uh-huh. If you have any other questions or you haven't done one of my sessions yet and you wanna like join in, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday for the most part, 10.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sorry, my, uh, my camera went off, um, but I was closing out the video anyway. I'd love to know what you guys think of this video. Um, I'd love to answer any other questions that you might have. Um, I apologize, any of this was not as helpful as it could have been. I did my best to look up the research and like use my, my own judgment. It's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun. I feel a very like Disney princess with this, or maybe Disney villain. Brrr. Hope to see you in the next co-working session if you haven't checked any out yet. I will also leave the schedule for my co-working sessions in the description of this video. Plus a bunch of links for different products that I really like that seem to be helpful for my ADHD. That's pretty much all I got for you. So, um, bye. <laughs>